Hello, everyone, and welcome aboard. How did this break? Uh, I'll be your Captain Hillian tonight, along with. Peace and my Lieutenant Rakir at your service. And where did the game go? There you go. <laughs> for some reason, it just didn't want to function for a moment. I had to turn it off and on again. And yeah, welcome to Cleo, a pirate's tale. Which, well, as it said in the pre bits, uh, which I'll try to keep in on the VODs. <clears throat> that gets uploaded to uh, YouTube. Uh, this was a Kickstarter game from 2020 and made primarily by one person. I'm going to presume he had some help with certain things, which we'll probably see in the credits. But uh, yeah, this game is a love letter to the old adventure games. And I ran across this whilst just going through my Steam queue, checking for games and uh, demos. And yeah, this one has one. So if you if you if you're curious and want to play this game for yourself, go give the <clears throat> go give the demo a try. And I enjoyed it. And uh, it it leaves you on a bit of a cliffhanger, of course. But that's well, what demos are for. <laughs> They're supposed to entice you to get the game itself. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. We'll just be playing the full game ourselves. So start new game. Have you fixed the settings? You like want to hear a up? story, hey? <laughs> First, let me ask you something. What is the most important thing about a story? A model hero? A villain that makes the blood freeze in your veins? A marvelously captivating narrator's voice? Or maybe a happy ending? Hmm. In any case, I'm sure there is no better way to start a story than with me, <laughs> pirate legend, Captain Kabika. <laughs> that was almost a little too easy. I did it again. Ah, oh, I am the best. Now, Ignatz's will of the wisp must be buried here somewhere. Aponzo, bring me the map again. Hey, Ponzo. <clears throat> well, guess that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> that question was, yeah, they were about the subtitles. Yes. <laughs> okay. Documents. Your active document is shown in the bottom left corner. Press tab or click the bottom left panel to show the active documents. You can customize the key, um, kind, yeah, key bindings in the settings. Okay, we've got a map of Bluff Key Island. Okay. Okay. Uh, hmm? No. Did not see Fluff. Okay, can't open it again, so we'll check in a second. Okay, your active inventory item is shown in the bottom right corner. At the moment, you can't use it. Take a look around to find a place where you can use your active inventory item with, well, WSD. Okay. Interaction. If you can interact with an object or the environment, this is shown in the top. <clears throat> At the top, press left mouse to interact. Can customize. Hmm, a pile of loosened earth. I think I should definitely dig here. Okay. If, if you can use or combine your active inventory item with an object or the environment, the border of the inventory item panel turns orange. Right click or click the panel to use the active inventory. Simple. Left to look. Yikes! Right to interact. Try. <laughs> that has never happened before. Again? Okay, uh, this is uh, <laughs> getting embarrassing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing Fluff Key. Yeah, yeah, you said uh, Fluff Free Island earlier, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I said Fluff Key, but oh well. <laughs> okay, okay. I will have to rewatch it later. For I will not be surprised if you ah, misspoke or if I misheard. Oh, no, that looks better. Uh, I beg your pardon. How does that look better? Captain Kavaka has a cutlass in his inventory. Use it to defend yourself against the skeletons. Press middle mouse or click the bag at the bottom to open the inventory and use the cutlass. Okay, there. Take that, you crash Okay, that's a new one. 
<laughs> okay, rather simple combats. I'm curious if we'll see it expanded later on, the glittering lights. Hmm. Something glitters under the loosened earth right here. Okay. Hello. Let's see. Kalimba, an old dusty but well-tuned instrument that was buried in the middle of Plufki Islands. Okay. And, yeah, we can screw around with this thing. Okay. <clears throat> in the demo, it took me a bit to figure this out, but the solution is right here on the screen. Can you guess it? Next, mark the spot, or...? No, we're already at the spot. Though it does have to do with spots on the map. The burn spots? Yep. C-E-A-B-E. -E. C-E-A-B-E. -E. I was thinking about earlier before where the map might just be decoration, but... Here's the thing, if it was kickstarted and if we're having high risk reviews and all wanna honor all the adventure click, click and point games and all that. Yeah, yeah you need to literally think outside the box a lot. <laughs> there we go, I, I must have misclicked. <laughs> Let's see. Ignatz's Willow the Wisp. At last, Ignatz's Willow the Wisp. <laughs> now, how about I continue the story of me, a Ponzo and the Willow the Wisp? Sure, I could tell you that, but this story is about someone else. Chapter 1. Captain Avery and a Death by Drowning. Uh -oh. Cleo! Hey, Cleo! Cleo! Have you heard what butthair Pete fished this morning? What? What did you just throw at me? Tell her, Pete. I, I guess it was a shrimp head. What? What? No! You were supposed to tell her what you had in the fishing net this morning. You are throwing a shrimp head at me? I am sitting right next to you. Couldn't you have just tapped me on the shoulder or something? Come on. Cocktail umbrellas. <gasps> what? Cocktail umbrellas. Crazy, right? There were hundreds of cocktail umbrellas in Pete's fishing net. Hey, Susie. <gasps> Do I get another bottle? Ugh, my name is Cleo. Why do you keep forgetting my name? It's easy. It's C-L-E... Yeah, whatever. Just get Pete the bottle. <sighs> and this is our actual main character. <laughs> Take away getaway. The Adventures of Pirate Legend Captain Quebeca. Volume 23. It is so incredibly exciting right now. I had to say. He needs a new bottle of rum. Again. Okay, uh, this I had to say. I love the very well made pixel art and the voice acting already. This is top notch. Yeah. Postcards from the family. Each one more boring than the last. But at least they don't have to listen to boring fish stories all day. And yeah, to my knowledge, this was mostly done by one person. Of course, not the voice acting. Uh, but yeah, still, just very impressive, even if it is just a small team. Especially if it's a small team. Yeah, no, as I said, if it is vo vo done with one voice actor only, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, but I very much doubt that. Also, really, Rumbar. 
barely drinkable rum. We know rum, we make rum. No whiskey business. Oh, come. Hey, did you guys know that Captain Kebika opened a secret door with a kalimba? Hey, Pete. What was the name of that bay again where you find all this crazy stuff? Oh, Panamu Bay. <laughs> the best fishing spot ever. Ugh, I was just about to tell you something. Do I always have to tell you this? Nobody is interested in your made-up stories. We are bartenders. Our guests tell the stories. We serve the rum bottles. We listen. Listen? You must be kidding. I can literally smell what Pete did today. He fished, and he drank rum. Yeah, right. Pete caught the fish for Herbert's fish soup. While you were just leafing through your stupid fantasy pirate book. It's not fantasy. Takeaway Getaway is the book series about the famous Captain Kabeka. Kabeka is a real adventurer, a legend, and not such a loser as... Pete? You! Carla, do you have more of this, uh, spicy sauce? Cleo! No, uh, soy. <coughs> I'll bring it, Pete. Cleo, bring Granny Gavel a bottle of rum before you get bored to death. She's out in the dock, knitting. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, yeah. Again. Cleo is very not happy here. Yeah. No, I remember there's something odd. Hmm? This is a bar, right? Yeah. Why is there a kid table at the bar? Shift around faster. If we'll probably be just stuck here because of the family business. Every uh, night, at least one customer loses his hook hand in the bar. And every day our wardrobe offers more space for goats. <laughs> no, that's a good one. Uh, every day, at least one pirate loses a hook here, and every day they add that hook to the quote-unquote wardrobe. <laughs> okay, that's a clever one. So that's what it looks like after a man with two hook hands eats soup. <laughs> this is my little sister. Can you tell me a pirate story, Cleo? Later, okay? Wait, boo. <laughs> Sounds like they get, a, get an actual kid for that one. Yeah. This is Pete's crew. They're playing crack and fodder. Unfortunately, I don't know the rules of the game. This is not for children. Exactly. And not for girls. Uh, yeah, and not for... Uh, get out of here, man. <laughs> but hair Pete's back. Do I really need to say more? There's a reason he has that name, so we probably should not expect too much. The facial animations for the, those pictures. Uh, the, the, this is a love letter and fashion project. Dartboards in poorly lit bars. I bet that was an invention made by the eye patch industry. <laughs> okay, let's head on over here. Come here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Cat Steven. Hmm. The guy looks busy. <laughs> if, if this was a game with Guybrush, we probably could punt the cat into the water. Because let's be honest, Guybrush is a bit of an asshole. <laughs> yeah. This is Granny Gabble. At least everyone calls her that. Nobody knows her real name. Hello, Granny Gabble. I have some more rum for you here. Yeah, I know. I'd like to be out there, too. Discovering new islands, going on adventures, being anywhere else in the world but here. <laughs> Even she is sick of Cleo talking. It's... hello. This is Grey Worm. He's currently setting a no-fish-caught record. 
Give it all you got, Grey Worm. I believe in you. Hello. Ugh, the boat smells like peat. Whereas Pete's smelling like the boat. Whatever. Both are smelling fishy for sure. <laughs> Chicken and the egg situation. <laughs> Which stank first? <laughs> I love the writing. <laughs> yeah, you you can see why I decided once I was done with the demo I that I immediately put wow. this game on the two Catching stream list. Granny Gabble was a blast, as always. Can I please read my book now? Hey, where is it? Maybe I'll give it back to you when you've helped Hatchet Herbert in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Come on! Or your silly book ends up in the oven faster than you can say shrimp head. <sighs> oh, that... Yeah, sorry, I don't like her father. Yeah, that's, this is not a good way of <laughs> raising children because they'll just, well, hold it against you. The oven burns extra hot today, as if it wasn't hot enough in a Caribbean kitchen. Only if I really have to. <laughs> How does the saying go? A knife in the hand is worth two... No, wait, that was another one. Mmm, yummy. A green fish soup, garnished with glibbery fish heads. Enriched with, well, whatever the heck is crawling into the stock pot right now. Okay, <laughs> note to self, skip the soup. Hey, Herbert. Hello, Cleo. What a nice day, huh? What a day. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to help you. Great, that's even more fun. Please, fetch me a fish from the net. Sure. Ew. Why are you in such a good mood? Don't you notice anything about me? Look closely. He wants me to bring him a new fish. Ugh, no matter where I stand, these fish eyes are staring right at me. Ugh, spooky. I honestly... I I'm honestly half curious where fish heads typically end up. I'm guessing mostly in the trash, but I'm guessing you could make some sort of cat food or something out of them. Maybe. The, I know you, the, some fish you can just eat fish heads since it's it's not exactly bone. Still, I'd, I'd probably avoid it, but then again, yeah. I, I have a long history of getting the fucking fish bones no matter what. Yeah, no, I guess it is. I'm not eating it. Obviously, I have heard, seen people eat it. Watching the movies. It's rather... Crunchy. Yeah. Hmm. A new hatchet? Wrong. A master cook knows. A hatchet is only as good as... The cook who chops with it? Wrong again! The board it's shopping on! Ah, I see. A new cutting board. Correct. This board is the Stradivari among the cutting boards. Some say it's almost as good as one of cutting board pits boards. Okay. <laughs> cutting board pit? What? Never heard of cutting board pit? He is a legend in the cutting board business. He only made a handful of cutting boards. Some say these boards are invaluable and unscratchable. Wow, so what happened to cutting board pit? He took a blood oath to never craft a cutting board again. And then he was gone. Nobody has seen him since. Okay. Hello. What the? There's a dead hand and a book in my fish! Wow! This is a real pirate's logbook, Herbert! Holy cow! That is not going into my soup. 
I will inform your dad about this. That's the first thing. Okay. I need <laughs> Think notes of. in this book, but these bony fingers are keeping the pages closed. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I... <laughs> um. Okay. Um. There we go. Yeah, if you click on one, others Logbook open or close. Adventurer Captain Avery Alwick. I fought three days and nights against the monster until I could finally kill it. By today, I will leave the Haven. Ha! The ship may sink to the bottom of the sea under the weight of all that gold. The wind blows right for me to sail to my final destination for now. Because there's still one treasure for me to search for. The biggest one of them all. The treasure of eternal memory. Whoa. A real pirate. What was that? Dorn. Herbert is going to chop my head off. Well, that was something. What the... That looks like a word. Or a name? Ye call me Lely. My fish soup! My cutting board! What's happened here? I... I mean, there was... Why the cutting board? Cleo? No, that wasn't me! It... it was a ghost! A ghost? Enough! Stop telling those lies! But I'm... I'm not lying. Cleo! It's time for you to grow up. No more of this crap. My book? No! No! Tomorrow morning, you will go fishing with Pete. What? But I can't even swim! I thought you wanted to go on an adventure. And I seriously don't want to see you around here. No back talk. Uh, Dan of the Year Award Cleo goes to. I couldn't sleep that night, for the ghost's appearance left her no peace. What was all of this supposed to mean? The ghost, the blood splatter, Yako Malaley. Cleo opened the mysterious logbook she had found and started to write. Happened to word for a second, I thought it froze. It is too early in the morning. Hi, <laughs> and that's good. Why? A huge shoal of fish swims directly into Panamu Bay every night. I don't know where they all come from, but an old fisherman saying goes if you fish early in the bay, you will have a very good time. You mean good day? Ah, don't make a fool of yourself. Have a look around and explore the boat. And don't worry, I'll let you know when we approach Panamu Bay. Uh, let's see. Logbook. On her journey, Cleo writes down her thoughts in the, <clears throat> in the logbook that she found. When Cleo has made a new entry, the icon in the top left corner appears. To read the entry, select the logbook in the inventory and open it. Let's see. Close logbook. I can't sleep. What happened to me today? Did I really see a ghost? Or was I paralyzed by fish <laughs> by Herbert's fish soup stink? But that can't be. The spilled soup, the broken cutting board, and above all, the bloody writing on the wall. Jikumi Lele. What does that mean? Ugh. That really meant it all. I really had to board Butt Hair Pete's boat. It stinks. I'm tired and I'm bored. I really imagined this adventure to be different. Okay, we'll be checking that whenever we can. For now, well, we have to not die of boredom. <laughs> uh. A hammer, a bottle of rum, pliers, another bottle of rum, and a tube of wood glue. Oh, wait, it's a bottle of rum too. <laughs> of course. 
Wait, what? Yep. So, who won? Huh? Who won our Kraken fodder yesterday? I am standing in the hot sun, repairing the fishing net. Take a guess. Oh, I'm sorry you lost. What? Why? No, I won. Then, why do you have to repair the net? Because I can. To tie a knot is the most honorable task on board. No, it's not. Correct. It's too not. But anybody could do that. Well, anybody who grew out of their Velcro sandals, right? It may look simple, but it's science. It's an art. It's a religion. I know the 605 sailor knots from the 55 knot grandmasters. They're called the Knot Fathers. Uh. Uh huh. On a fishing boat, every crew member should be able to master these knots. It's a matter of life and death. I can show you how to untie any knot in seconds. Do you want to know how that works? Mm. You cut it. You're gonna kill us all, girl. <laughs> Ever heard of the word Ikomi Lele anywhere? No, never heard of it. Definitely not one of the Not Fathers. Well, I do not want to keep you from your holy task any longer. Good night, or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, like the uh, Monkey Island games, the characters are very. Uh characteristic yeah <laughs> whoa pete looks really fresh this morning he doesn't smell fresh though okay he probably fell off the dock trying to get to the boat that's why well at least he's probably awake but well seeing as that's likely where all the fish had to go i can see how he'd still stink like all hell uh, do you see the wall? Yep. The knot's father. Uh, wait, that's something behind it. Wait a minute. There's a small piece of paper behind that poster. <laughs> I'm already a food. <laughs> yeah. This was still in the demo, though, so I already knew this bit. The note Let's see. Says the 10 best baits ever. Number 8 made me cry. Really clickbait in paper form. Hey, what are you doing there? I'm maintaining my Kraken fodder set. Can you teach me that? Sure. First you need to wipe the rum and blood off the set. So you can begin with the real maintenance. No, not the maintenance. I mean the rules of the game, Kraken fodder. Oh, uh... Yeah, why not? <laughs> I guess a new opponent would be refreshing. Cool. Do you have your set with you? Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> well, that's bad. Uh, maybe not Joe can lend you his set. Have you heard of the word Ikomi Lily anywhere before? No. What does that mean? I'd like to know that too. I'll be right back. Okay, I, I like how once you're out of options, it just goes right into the see you later bit. Yeah, this is kind of helpful that then you know you have talked about all you can. Yeah. Hey, Captain Velcro Sandals, it's me again. Shh. I need to finish this knot before I lose the thread. Through the bunny hole, round the back of the tree, whoop de whoop, and done. What do you want? Can I borrow your Kraken fodder set? No. Kraken fodder is a game for seamen. You're not a man, and you don't belong here on the high seas. An old fisherman saying goes, a good knot on the boat will keep you above water. You mean a float? And pff, yeah, I can tie knots. <laughs> you don't even know the 55 knot fathers. Sure I do. Well, really? Prove it. No problem. Who invented this knot? It almost looks like... 
A giant octopus with sneaky eyes. And yeah, <laughs> this is a puzzle. So, uh, one day are not letting you brute force in any way. <laughs> Let me think about that for a moment. Ha, <laughs> take your time. Uh. <laughs> yeah, he may uh, talk big about knowing all the not fathers, but he has a cheat sheet. <laughs> so let's cheat with his sheet. I was pulling if it was it, but... It's locked. Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's also a joke to, well, the old Monkey Island uh, copy protection with the, <laughs> the whole uh, pirate thing. I forget this, what they specifically called it. Whoa, you Let's see. We need to get into the cargo hold to actually be able to use it, though, I think. Uh, and... no, we, we still have this thing with us. Okay, can we hand that over to what? someone? Wait, hold... Why do you still have that? Good question. High fives? Maybe. Uh, sad, but creepy. <laughs> uh, she could uh, lend it out to people. Lend them a hand. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, no new entries. How do we get into the cargo hold then? Uh, oh do you God! Know anything about knots? Oh, please stop talking about knots! All day long, Joe is jangling my nerves with those stupid knots. So knock it off! No, I just wanted to. If you say the word not one more time, I will throw you overboard. I swear on my mother's tattoo. Okay, okay. Wait, does your mother have a tattoo? Do you have a tattoo of your mother, or did your mother tattoo you? An old fisherman saying goes, If you remember your mother in ink, your boat will never go down. Ugh. <sighs> The three of you went to school together, didn't you? Now, oh, this nut Joe is driving me nuts. All day I hear him gabbling over there in the cargo hold. John, Carl, Frank, ugh, gag me with a spoon. I think he built something in there to learn all those stupid names. So please leave me alone and let me know when you got the set. Okay, that's the hint to tell us to go over here. Still locked. Yeah, also, also, I just realized something. Hmm? There was a literal joke that flew past over both our heads. And that one was? We pried a cool dead hand from a book. <laughs> yeah, we cried and we pried the book from a cold dead hand. Okay. Yeah, but you see what we, we, the, which phrase I'm referring to. Yeah, <laughs> you'll have to pry it from my cold dead hands. Uh, <laughs> it was a a that almost looks like a giant octopus with sneaky eyes, right? Hey. Let me think. <laughs> okay, yeah, they they have to cut and paste a bunch there because of just just the amount of names they put in there. Now, how do we uh, we can speak now instead of look? Can I have the keys for the cargo hold? For sure. Fishing got you interested, didn't it? I think you are going to become a real fisher girl. I can literally smell it. Yay. <laughs> Note to self: bathe for eight hours straight. I don't think that's good for you either. It's locked. There. And hello. Uh, that's it. There's something carved into the wood of this barrel. Hello. There we go. Now, I forget the specifics of this, but... Let's see. I see the octopus with sneak eyes. Yeah. Okay, there's the octopus. Then we need to 
Let's see. The guy. Bruce. Okay. Giant. Oh, okay. I... Does that mean that we need to start from here? Because it's revealing five names. So Terry, Angus, Kenny. Let's try that. Terry, Angus. <laughs> Great. I feel dizzy now. <laughs> I know the voice act. I recognize the voice of the actress there. Oh, that's some, there's some, another voice actor who are very good at doing that voice as well. Who? Yeah. yeah, I, I would not be surprised at our voice actors who have kind of taken over other voice actors due to they can imitate them so well. I'm sure that is actually a thing, but I would not be surprised. Okay. But oh, at times I feel like I heard a voice so far back that it makes you wonder how bloody old are they by now. Terry? Wait, what? That is correct. I was afraid you'd bring bad luck to this boat, but I guess I underestimated you. Those who know the Not Fathers are worthy to play Kraken Fodder. Here, I'll lend you my set. Thank you, brother and naughty spirit. May the not be with you. <laughs> okay, yep. Okay, I, yeah, I, I had I had some trouble figuring that one out during the <laughs> during the demo, in yeah, in what they wanted to be lined up and such. But yeah, octopus, uh, sneaky eyes, and then giant is the name that you know, the the descriptor is what you need to read out. Okay, this is just a triple check. Because we have giants there. Oh, we got three sets. Okay. Uh, let's see where. There's the octopus. I need to get the sneaky eyes on that. Yeah. I, I, at, at first. So yeah, one, two, and then the third one is the one you actually read out. Okay. Yep. <laughs> like I said, I got uh, stuck on that. I'm, no. I'm mm -hmm. not surprised. I got the set! Nice! Let's start. The easiest way to learn the rules is by playing the game. Or do you want to read all the rules first? Yeah, let's have a read first. Take a look at the rules first. Let's see. Kraken Father is a game for two players. Each player starts with nine cards and five dice. The goal of the game is to destroy the deck of the opponent with cannon shots. The cards with the value two to six are cannons, and five dice are the cannon balls. The area on the left side of your deck is called the sea. This is where your fire cannonballs go. At the beginning of the game, this area is empty. Below the deck is the world of the dead. Your lost cards are lined up down here. At the beginning of the game, this is empty. Shuffle the nine cards and turn them face down as a stack in front of you. On the right side of the deck is the ship's hold. Your five cannonballs are stored here at the beginning of the game. <clears throat> each round starts by both sides drawing the top card, and it's time to play out the skills of each card. The cannons, two to six. It, like, <clears throat> a cannon card can attack every card of the opponent, but you need to have cannonballs stored in the ship's hold. If your opponent is also able to attack, a sea battle will begin. The gameplay of a sea battle will be expanded, explained afterwards. The cannon boy. The cabin boy is responsible for the equipment on board. He can reload the fired cannonballs from the sea back to the ship's hold, or he can repair a broken cannon card from the world of the dead and put it back onto the deck. The cabin boy cannot attack. The skills of this card will be played before a possible attack from the opponent. The witch, the, <clears throat> uh, the witch can resurrect a crew member, uh, Jack or King, or the Kraken, Ace, from the World of the Dead, and put it back under the deck. The witch cannot attack, and skills of this card will be played before a possible attack. The captain automatically attacks with all remaining cannonballs from the ship's hold. If your opponent is also able to attack, a sea battle will begin. The game plays a sea battle. Da -da -da. At the end of this round, the captain reloads all fired cannonballs back to the ship's hold, even if he lost the battle and goes to the world of the dead. The Kraken is the most deadly card in the deck. It directly destroys the opponent's card before any card skill can be played. The Kraken also destroys itself and goes directly to the world of the dead as well. Okay, so it's a, basically a nuke. Would be good to play against the captain, since, well, the captain is just a high attack with that. A sea battle will begin when both sides draw cards that can attack, cannon cards or the captain, and also have available cannonballs stored in the ship's hold. 
The, the player with the highest card decides how many cannonballs he wants to use for the attack. After that, the opponent chooses the number of cannonballs. Both sides throw the, number of chosen, the chosen number of dice. Attention, you can only attack with cannonballs from your ship's hold. If you have no cannonballs left, you are defenseless until you draw the captain or the cabin boy and to reload the ship's hold. If you feel like your chances for the battle are low, you can also save the cannonballs and skip the attack by sacrificing your card. After both sides have thrown the chosen amount of dice, the evaluation starts. The player with the highest dice value wins, only the dice value or, <clears throat> or double, triple, etc. wins. If the dice values are the same, no other dice values will be included in the evaluation. The dice roll will be repeated with the same number of dice. Let's see. Okay, five, bigger than reds. Two twos beat one and uh, two ones. They draw with the same amounts. Okay, but amount of matches beats uh, numbers or the height of numbers. Okay. After a sea battle, all fired cannonballs go to the sea and can only be used again after they were reloaded by the captain or the cannon boy to the ship's hold. The winning card goes back under the deck and the losing card goes to the world of the dead. Afterwards, a new round begins. And only one player is able to attack with his card, for example, because the ship's hold of the other player is empty or he has drawn the witch or the cannon boy. He can decide if he wants to attack the opponent's card. It is not necessary to roll the dice because the opponent cannot attack anyway. You just need to put a die from the ship's hold to the sea. But you can also save the cannonball and spare the enemy's card. If both sides draw cannon cards with the same values and both sides are able to attack, each side has to attack with one die. The game is over as soon as all cards of one deck are destroyed. In rare cases, the game can end with a draw. Okay. A bit lengthy, but simple. Yeah, I kind of like this. This is like a game you can actually play in real life. <laughs> Okay, your opponent drew the witch. There is no cream member or kraken in the world of the dead for him to resurrect. But we can destroy the cards by rolling one, by sacrificing one dice. So they are one card down already. Okay, they got the captain. Also, Welcome back. I, I, yes, baby. I, while here I was reading, I kicked my headphones on and went to grab myself another drink. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Sea battle reaction. Your opponent drew the captain and fires all the remaining cannons at ball, uh, cannonballs at you. I would like to. You know, how would you like to react? You can choose the number of cannonballs by clicking on the amount of dice value, or click on the deck to refuse and sacrifice the card. Let's well, let's go all out since they'll be going all out. And let's see. Oh, it's a draw. Okay, roll again. We've got two sixes, and yeah, we win. That's two cards of his down, and he has. Oh, he already lost the witch, so he can't use. He can't resurrect anything. Okay, he has a higher number of those. Let's see. You can't or refuse to attack your opponent. You can now decide whether he wants to destroy your card with a single cannonball or to spare your cards. All right. He. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now we have the captain. Uh -oh. You can't or refuse to attack your uh, opponent. He can now decide whether he wants to destroy your card with a single cannonball to spare your card. Isn't the captain supposed to reload all the cannonballs before? Okay. Oh, oh he reloads after. after. <laughs> okay. I had, that wrong. I had the order of that wrong. They first fire all and then reload all. Okay. Uh, your cannon uh, card has the higher value, so you decide first if and how you want to attack. You can choose the number of cannonballs by clicking the amount of dice value. Um, he has three. Let's match with three. He's only using one. And we win. Handily. Okay. We're on equal footing with that. Only he has one card more in there. Oop. You drew the cannon boy, click on the fired cannonballs in the seat to reload them, or click on the destroyed cannon card to reload it. Let's just get more cannonballs for instead. Okay. But we can't uh, we can't attack, so we are going to lose the cabin boy. Okay. Equal footing, but we have more cannonballs. The opponent drew the cabin boy, so he's going to reload. Uh, but we can <clears throat> Insta but we have get the witch, so we can reload. We can resurrect someone. So let's get the captain. They are now at the bottom of the deck. 
Okay. Oh, I see what it is with this. The, the higher number on the cannons determines who can get to attack first. Let's get it, do it simple with two against one. And we would have won that anyways. Okay. Draw another crack. Uh, two krakens. Okay. Both cards will be destroyed before any skilled card can be played. But that does nothing because it's both krakens. <laughs> he has the bigger number. Okay, he did one there. Let's do two. And we win yet again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the game is going easy with us uh, on this. I have to say, I don't know any game that have used cards and dice in this manner. Draw. I know that... Uh, oh, we lost that one. I know that the Witcher had dice poker, but that was just dice. A mixture of yeah. cards and dice is so a match. Uh, yeah, he's just going to destroy that one. A mixture of cards, and, or even just a simplified set of cards. <clears throat> uh, I've not really heard too much of. You know, we can't yeah. attack, but we still get all our cannons. It kind of makes sense uh, uh, to, to try to make a game this manner, like, especially in this era, like, dice was a thing, card was a thing, so you could be invented with those. Let's get our cabin boy back. We are going to lose the witch, so that is a big blow against us. Okay, he has the stronger one there, and that's, oh, we lost that all the same. We still have our cannon boy, uh, cannon boy, cannon boy, our cabin boy. Okay. Cannon boy. <laughs> he gets, oh, he, he gains back a cannon. Okay, we can destroy his cabin boy. We've knocked out all of his officers, so he only has two, uh, no, three cannon cards left. Okay. And that's a win for us. Yeah, with the simple rules cards and just a few, you know, just one set of, uh, two sets of cards. Actually, no, one set of cards since, well, <laughs> different suits. And a f the 10 dice or, yeah, 10 dice, maybe some tokens if you have less. This could be easily played. Okay. Uh, let's bring back our strongest cannon. I just realized. I would not be surprised if some people, the, the, the developer, actually try this game in real life, real cards, as an experiment. Could be. Uh, he has no cannonballs, so that's an automatic win. And he has only one card left. So, <laughs> fire in the hole. Oh, crap, you won! Of course, I, I lost on purpose. I mean, obviously. Do you want to play another round? Please, no. Oh, you're a chicken, eh? <laughs> I knew it. Let me know if you change your mind. Now, for my mom's tattoo's sake, what was that? Go! Bring me the tools before everything's underwater. Hurry! Okay, I the water is actually spreading, so I wonder if you would wait long enough if it would just flood the entire place. Uh, um, there was something in the water. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Eric! Uh, well, I can't swim. Well, uh. Oh, great. Even the freaking anchor is half gone, and... Uh... Well, so much for an adventure. Pete! Pete! What is happening? Come on! 
That was a refresh, wasn't it? Leo was dragged down into the deep. Yet, before she passed out, she had been able to catch a single word through the rumble of the deep sea. And that is where the demo would end. So everything from here is going to be new. Ouch. Where... where am I? The attack. We've been attacked. A huge monster drank... Uh, drank... dragged Pete's <laughs> uh, boat... Uh, ship into the depths of the sea. I passed out and now I woke up on a beach that I don't recognize. How did they survive this? Where am I? I want to go home again. Hello. Oh, I didn't even notice you. Oh, great. A fan. You're a real siren. Is that clear? Not a nymph and not a mermaid. Or whatever cheesy words you humans use to describe us. Remove them from your vocabulary. Understood? There really isn't anything we hate more than that. Wow. Except when people dress up in cheap fins and take selfies in their bathtub. I mean, come on. An absolute no-go. That's what I've always dreamed of as a child. Don't. Those photos will stay on the internet forever. No, not the bathtub thing. I've always dreamed of being a real pirate on a treasure hunt and meeting a real siren. You? A pirate? Yeah, with, like, a parrot on the shoulder and everything, you know? Hmm. What do you want? Oh, I... I just want to go home. Good. Ciao. Could you help me? No way. I'm, like, kind of busy right now. Oh. <laughs> May the gods and goddesses grant me mercy. We have all of those. A valley those girl siren. What is a a, a valley girl siren? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it, yeah. So I mean, I only recently realized the that kind of manner of how would you call it, a speech mannerism? Yeah. Or it, it, all right, speech. Okay. Thanks to here we go with speech mannerism. I hope that is correct. Otherwise, blame Hill. I hate the Valley Girl way of speaking. It's. Like the worst? Uh, yes, it makes my blood boil. It doesn't help that most of the time you hate it speak is usually with uh, someone very unlikable, like a bully in school or, you know, the high school prom queen and all that. <laughs> and I asked them in the same manner of speak because they overuse like, like a ton. <laughs> Yeah. Like, they, like it's every used, every third word or something. Blech. Yeah. It's not that they also had that... Arrogant, snobbers, like... It, it, oh, how to describe it? Yeah, smugness. It, okay, imagine an ogre trying to be rich and snobber at you, but if you know an ogre don't have the... Vocabulary. Yeah. But it's thinking about <laughs> ours too. Okay. Like, <laughs> no, she, oh. she, this one does seem to have some brain cells, but... Uh. Uh, I was focused on the frog, so I didn't even notice her back there until we <laughs> we started talking. <laughs> so something on the photo phone. Okay, what's that? A flower? Wait, is that a mermaid? Uh, then I forgot to feel the. Uh, then I looked down and I saw, oh, that's not a pearl or flower, that's a frog. Have you ever heard the word you call me Lily anywhere? Wait, how do you know that name? It's a name? Where did you hear it? Uh, to be honest, a ghost wrote it on a wall in fish blood in my father's bar. A ghost? <sighs> Nobody believed me at home either. 
And that's why I had to get on that stinky fishing boat as a punishment. What happened then? When then the boat was attacked by something enormous. The Kraken? <laughs> no way. Yeah, a Kraken. But after that, I can't remember anything. You're telling me you survived the Kraken? I don't know what happened. I woke up over there on the beach. <laughs> a little inconspicuous girl. So, who is Yikomi Lele? Madame Yikomi Lele. She is the omniscient one, the all seeing one, the infallible one. A fortune teller? Something like that, yes. <laughs> she probably already knew you were coming. So, is she here? You mean on this island? Oh, yeah, always. Okay. <laughs> Does this stand for the, you know, painfully stereotypical valley girl? <laughs> what are you doing there? I'm weaving a wreath of folo flowers. For who? For me. Stupid question. <laughs> okay. And what do you know about the Kraken? You don't know? What? Rumor has it that if the Kraken spares someone, it means something. What do you mean? To me, that means either your story is a lie, or you are destined for something special. I will keep my personal opinion about that to myself. That's a nice looking wreath. Hmm, I don't know. It's still pretty average. Don't you think? No, not really. Who asked you? The more full of flowers, you. the better. And these are clearly not enough. Can you tell me where to find this, Madam Yikomi Lele? Hmm, I don't know. Please. Stop begging. That's pathetic. A suggestion. You bring me 20 full of flowers, and I'll show you the way. <sighs> Collect 20 flowers. So this is going to be that kind of adventure. <laughs> chop, chop. Okay. All right. <laughs> the, the, uh, the is slightly not as stereotypical as a the valley stereotype, but she does still have the annoyance, smugness. Yeah. They use it is a reducible like, 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 like all. The, yeah. The, probably for the new. It's overdone, and I, I suspect most values don't use like too much, unless they want to be trying to be really hood like. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, that overuse died somewhere in the zeros, or at least the tens. Hmm, it's sadly it did until sadly. Okay. Now, my guess is that uh, after the Kraken ate Butt Hair Pete, it probably spat out whatever else he could find <laughs> or didn't even yeah. touch it in the first place. Let me have to say this. The tentacle was really, painfully, obviously a reference to the Day of the Tentacle. Yep. The game I've actually never played myself, but I have heard that it is supposed to be absolutely hilarious. So Same, maybe a bit... Uh... I don't remember if it's David the Tentacle or some other old adventure game that's considered a classic, but some can be a bit uh, problematic with uh, modern uh, sensibilities. I seen uh... bad jokes yeah, and such. Jokes that, yeah, yeah, I... yeah. Sometimes I have jokes that age rather well, but I again also think that it. Very poorly, and probably was the even poorly. Is still hot. Someone made a fire here recently. Yeah, even at the time, considered bad taste. Yeah, even then, considered bad taste. Hmm, the drawer is locked. The lock doesn't look very secure, though. Someone's camp here. Let's see, we still have the fall and the, the Kraken father sets the severed hand. The severed hand was inside of a fish along with a logbook. Presumably the hand belongs to the adventurer Avery Alwick. And Folo Flower Blossom. 
A blossom of the rare polo flower. We need 20 of them to take to the siren uh, <clears throat> on the south side of the island. Wait, mm. I recognize this. Hmm? Yeah, I recognize this place. <laughs> Ouch! The naughty crab snapped at me. He's got something against me stealing those tights. Why do you want to <laughs> those in the first place? But then I... We can't use the hand to distract it. Ain't this your camp? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's some very black and white mosquitoes for some reason. Hmm. Will? Uh, Why did you ruin that from? Uh, hello. Oh, hi. Are you here for the party? Party? Well, the party for worthy swamp monsters. Do I look like a worthy swamp monster to you? No, oh, of course not. You obviously lack a mustache. A mustache? Really? I am not a swamp monster! Oh, please excuse me, my mistake. I'm just so excited. And you this cannot hide it? first swamp monster party. I really believe this is the year it happens. What will happen? I could already feel the tingling on my upper lip. You know, uh, I'm really late. All my friends have had one for years. One what? A mustache. Why do you need a mustache so badly? Are you kidding? Every young swamp monster pupates before the annual party in the hope of becoming a worthy swamp monster with a mustache to be able to leave the cocoon to go to this prestigious party. Couldn't you just paint yourself a mustache or glue it onto your face like normal people? Oh, don't be silly. I'm being silly? Mind you, you're the one who wants to grow a mustache. <laughs> you obviously have no idea what you're talking about. Is there anything else or can I focus on my metamorphosis again? What are you drinking there? Just some swamp water mix, nothing special. A good water balance is crucial for a dense beard growth. I think that's something to it. Look at my own beard. Would one of those funny peach fuzz beards work? You know, like the guys who always sit in the back of the bus have? No, won't work. It has to be a proper lip warmer, right? That's the way it is. A stupendous soup strainer? Yep. A real face furniture. That's enough. But, yes, exactly. Got it. <laughs> okay. So we have to help a, a swamp monster get a mustache? Okay. Nice cocoon. Oh, well observed. This is the finest multi-layer silk. Lightweight, windproof, and extremely durable. Okay, we'll probably need some of that silk, I'm guessing, at some See point. Later. Hmm. Did, did not expect something like that to just pop up, <laughs> but okay. Yeah. And I would say this, before you told me about the mosquitoes, I was wondering, what kind of birds are those supposed to be? Then you said mosquito and it dawned on me. Uh. Okay, let's grab as many of these as we can. How many is that? 16, okay. So four more to go. I don't wonder. Hmm. People hate mosquitoes rather universal, ain't it? Yep. Because the bastards bite and the stings like all hell. Luckily, for some uh, reason, mosquitoes tend to not favor me for some reason. Same. They, they did in the past, not too much. The favorite everyone else bought me. It was kind of rare that they beat me. Yeah, and, I've been told that it has something to do with sour blood or something, so I guess being a sour puss has its advantages. <laughs> oh, gosh, and also... Why is that beaver here? You can see the beaver over there, right through this forked branch. We're going to make a slingshot, aren't we? We're going to make a slingshot and make the life of that beaver hell. Hmm. Let's 
see. Could we... No, we can't use the card trick. Oh, God. Now I remember something I'm from Captain Sauce. Who? Uh, in one of his videos, uh, they were to see something about the... Uh, click... Click on all carnivores in correct order. And he thought he clicked on a beaver in a world. Wait. Beavers are herbivores. They're not carnivores. So he looked up. Yeah, beavers are herbivores. Only to realize it was not a beaver he clicked on. What did he click on? A bear. <laughs> Welcome to the Tell Me Swamps. Yeah, when he when it dawned on him to, again, they did the whole cutesy art style. So if it had been a beaver, you would expect them to at least add the tail. But yeah. He did feel <laughs> when it did dawn on him, he felt so st <laughs> I wanted to give him a hug. Okay. There's one more flower that we need, but for that we need to cross over. Oh, we can go over here. Hello. Hello. Ah, you scared the crap out of me. <sighs> Great. There goes my last drawbreaker. Who are you? I'm Cleo. And who are you? I am Malty. Malty Theus. Failing cocktail mixer. You make cocktails? I mix cocktails. I try cocktails. I make cocktails better. I know cocktail recipes from all over the world. And you consciously sell cocktails to people behind the wheel of a boat. Yep. <laughs> I think I can guess how you ended up stranded here or whatever. Oh dear. Mocktails maybe could be a good idea, but... Oh, wait. Mocktails are alcohol-free variant, right? I do believe so. I've never yeah, had I any cocktails. For, I think mm. you'd want to tool me or something? Could be. I'd be up for trying mocktails sometimes because I don't know how I'd be drunk and I don't think I'd want to find out anyways. I already found out... Uh, uh, I think I told you the story before. Who? Oh? Let's say these people. If you are on medication... Avoid alcohol at all costs. Yeah, uh, this was an accident. They, they had no soda. I was 17, they gave me the weakest cider with alcohol. It was fine, I drank like... One third, then suddenly, after 10 minutes, my body shut down. My yeah. mind was awake, my eyes were moving, but not the rest. But, but my mouth was barely moving. I just collapsed. With a space marine aiming at my face. <laughs> they had to carry me to a sofa. Yeah, medications of any kind and uh, alcohol just do not mix because it has a tendency to thin your blood somewhat or something. Uh, it, yeah. Yeah, yes, just don't do the people for it can be rather unpleasant. And lethal. Yeah, in worst case, can be lethal, yes. For, yeah, many medications don't mix with alcohol at all. Yeah. Let's see, I just noticed this. 38, okay. Have you ever heard of Madame Yikomi lately? If this isn't the cocktail recipe, then I don't know nothing about it. Wait, his looks there looks familiar. What's that strange green vending machine over there? Oh, that? A real jam, isn't it? This is the Cocktail 8000. Market-leading cocktail. cocktail mixing machine. A cocktail consists of three basic components. Base, modifier, and flavor. Just put the three components in the chambers, and Cocktail 8000 does the rest. Cool. Can I try it? Sure, why not? But it's broken at the moment. Uh, start lever broke off. Huh. This boat looks like it's been through quite a bit. That's why I'm repairing it. What happened? Same thing that has been happening for years. Drunk driving. breaks apart. I can tell you, the current on this island is a curse. 
keeps pushing my boat back against that rocky cliff. Don't ask me how many times I've had to put the old thing back together. How many times? Well, you are standing <laughs> on board of the venerable Attempt 38. Oh. Mm-hmm. And you call your boat Attempt 38? Believe me, at some point you give up making sonorous names. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Oh god. And also, are you stone so when we now look at him and hear him speak? Is he a nugget reference? Not sure. But he looks a lot like Pete. Yeah, but also How look like nuggets. When I was a young man, I had the dream of starting my own business as a sailing cocktail mixer. My motto was there's no problem a cocktail can't solve. Except drunkenness. Work out, give it a shot. For years, I have collected cocktail recipes all over the world. I have invested all my savings in the best ingredients and in this boat. Darn it, my business plan even had a salt rim. What could have gone wrong, right? But? Well, of course, if you have a new recipe, you have to at least try the cocktail, right? I got this recipe from a self-help group called the Anonymous Anesthetist. And the drink was called Near Death on the Beach. Doesn't sound too bad, does it? I was thinking the same thing, so I tried it. After that, everything went blurry. I heard whispering voices, and I remember countless little blue lights. And I'm pretty sure I puked onto the desk of a pale, boring man with a semi-bald head and horn-rimmed glasses. When I woke up again, my boat was stranded on this island. I've been here ever since, trying to sail away. What would you say the chances are that, uh, Attempt 38 will make it? To be honest, without a decent sail, rather poor. What about the sail? It's totally busted. Has holes everywhere and it's way too thin. This whole thing can't be patched up again. If I could get you a new sail, would you take me home then? <laughs> a new sail? You are an optimist. Where do you want to get it from? Well, uh... If you manage to find a decent sale and we get away from this island, then you can consider me your personal sofer for the next 24 hours. All right. I'll see what I can do. See you later. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that's what we need the silk for. And I'm pretty sure was... that line was a lot of references. Yes, he feels like a reference to Nugget from, uh, oh, what was it called? I know Captain Saucer and Odin has played as well. Uh, kindergarten? Yeah, was it Kindergarten? Right Something in? like that. Yeah, y y you see the odd resemblance with Nugget, don't you? Especially how he talks. Uh, Nugget talks a lot more in the third person. Yeah, but he also has that the little tone with his voice. I, hmm. it, would you count it a, that, that as a lisp? I'm unsure on it, but I'm pretty sure that that line of near death on the beach, the aftermath of that, that probably was just full of references to other stuff. I'm honestly surprised they didn't make putting them. Uh, <laughs> wait, maybe they did put in a, a, a Grim Fandango reference in there. Uh, also, I misheard you. I thought you said lime. Most of course, I was staring at a certain thing Fly. on the boat here. <laughs> also, what is the salt the rim on the, with a cocktail actually for? I have no bloody idea. This guy went down with his boat 37 times. But these bottles don't have a single scratch. <laughs> Okay, we're going. I'm. I'm thinking we're going to have to mix up a cocktail that quote unquote puts some real hair on your chest, but instead it's on your lip. But we'll need something for the handle. Hmm. Can we like? Nope. Okay. Hmm. And we have some we have some things that we need to do now. We just need to figure out the sequence. We have a lock uh, thing, a, a lock drawer over there. We have uh, a catapult uh, well that needs to be made. 
to get that beaver to move, which will probably make him build a dam here so he can get that lost flower. Uh, oh, let's see, the siren. Well, I can't believe it. I met a real si I met a siren. A real siren. She told me that uh, Jikomi Lele is the name of a fortune teller who lives here on this island. It can't all be a coincidence, can it? But maybe this Jikomi Lele can help me get home. Uh, the swamp monster lives in the Tell Me Swamps on this island. He pupated into a huge, high-quality cocoon, waiting for a mustache to grow. Uh, this could be my salvation. I met a man who is fixing his boat to sail away from this island. The bad news is that it's his 38th attempt. Without a new sail, the odds are slim. If I manage to find a new sail, this guy could probably take me home. Okay, so we need to look from you. We need a bar or something to operate the mix, the cocktail mixer. We need something to pick the lock here. But first, we, we need also something to distract this uh, crab. That's being uh, actually shellfish. Hmm. Yes, it is being very shellfish. <laughs> For a uh, moment, I was wondering if you actually did not hear that joke. <laughs> See you later. Hmm. Okay, what do we need this jawbreaker for? Hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty certain we can't use it as a lockbreaker. Hmm. No. Not very secure, so as long as we have something we could potentially break it with. Hmm. Hmm. We have 19 of the flowers. Let's have a chat with the siren again. There's also this here. Can we use the jawbreaker here? No. Hmm, some straight Maybe we can ask the siren about that? Hey! Hey! Do you have the full of flowers? Not all. Well then, chop chop! Okay, so she's not going to be... Oh, hello. This is debris from Pete's boat. Okay, anything useful among here, maybe? This is to Hmm, no. Okay, maybe we could put yeah, pick out a uh, piece of iron or something. Hmm. Okay, we're missing something then. Yeah. That's rock probably has something to do with the siren, not the siren with the kraken. Well, it does hmm. have a certain um, carving on it. Okay, stupid idea. Probably not going to do anything. No, we can't use the <laughs> we can't use the Kraken cards. Hmm. Let's see. What is there to do then? So I'm pretty sure his name is probably a pun. Hmm. Darn. It doesn't work. Looks like the start lever is missing. Does that all the components spell Seamus? Yeah, multi Seus. Multi Seus. Multi Seus. I believe that might be a drink name. Multi Seus. Also, Hell 9000. I do oh, like no. that it has a little... Uh, <laughs> I do like that it has a little bow and uh, a towel, like a... Uh, what would you call that specific? Like a you know, servant? Or a, a, a butler of sorts? Hmm. Waiter? Yeah, a, wa a waiter I would probably be the closest. Hmm. Even bartenders had that a while, a while back. Oh, well. Fancy bartenders. Let's see. A rock hard candy that smells like alcohol. It fell out of this strange cocktail maker's mouth and I picked it up immediately. On Britain, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Yeah. Ouch! The naughty crab snapped at me. He's got some. 
I'm pretty sure we need to use this as a bullet for yeah, scaring the <clears throat> for scaring the beaver. But we still need the sling part of the slingshot. Don't that we need that. The beaver with that. It's gonna get stuck on his fur. The poor thing. <laughs> hmm. So we need something, a stick or something to keep the the crab at bay. Hmm. Okay. It's nice that we got a run function so we can just get around faster. Yeah, Let's and again, people, can, I can... really like, love this art style. Very yeah. really funny. Here, you had mini form. We can see her eye color, but we see her more enlarged form. We don't see her eye color. And close up, you mean? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, how do we continue here? I'm not seeing anything that we can f interact with any further or collect. Hmm. See you later. Hmm. Just, he's just drinking a mixture of water or something. Uh, milk as well. Hmm. I think the starting point is going to be this, but how do we break it open? Hmm. And what is the hand going to be used for? Is th or is that just going to be something that's going to be stuck in our inventory for the longest time? Hey, it's me again. What's up? What was it again? Why is the cocktail machine not working? Well, as I said, the start lever broke off. Otherwise, the Cocktail 8000 is in perfect condition. Okay, oh, so we see an arm. Yep. We can't use the hand on it, though, so we need an actual arm. Or a stick or something. Hmm. Okay, I might have to look up what we're missing. Because it's very obviously that's something is being overlooked yeah can we no we can't grab that hmm we need a decent stick or something to break that lock with hmm is there something in the sand there yeah there's this but that was where we picked one of the flowers all right hmm I, I get the feeling I'm missing something off. Ah, something stabbed me in the foot. Watch it, clumsy. <laughs> what? Who is speaking? Down here. You stepped on one of our lances, you fool. Who the heck are you? Shrimpus Maximus, commander of the 12,008 Legion. We have infiltrated almost every body of water in the world. We are... The Shrimp Pyre! Are you an army or something? An army? No! Better! A parcel service provider! A parcel service provider? Under... water? The Shrimp Pyre consists of billions of shrimp! I'm talking billions of very well-trained underwater delivery forces here! The Shrimp Pyre delivers everything in the shortest time possible! To every place close to the water, excluding locations in the nautical fog. And what did I just step on? On a lance! Our entire arsenal of weapons is lined up down here! Arsenal of weapons? Didn't you just say you were parcel service? And? Does a parcel service have to be defenseless? Let me tell you, delivering packages and pacifism do not go well together! The enemy has cut me and my men off! The... enemy? Put up a barricade behind us! And now we're stuck here behind enemy lines! So far, our attacks have been unsuccessful! But sooner or later, we will bring this insurgent to his knees! Oh, you mean the beaver over there? I just can't stand the two-tooth malicious grin of this indomitable rodent any longer! Well, good luck then. 
Can you just let me through for a moment? I have to go to the other side. No way! Our arsenal! Don't you remember? If you just walk through here, we are completely defenseless and at the mercy of the enemy! You have already destroyed a land! Dear God! Look at that! Completely useless! Many thanks! Here, you can keep the damaged lands! But you won't be able to get through here until we can break through the barricade! Uh, I'll take care of the beaver, alright? Be careful, soldier! I've looked that maniac right in the dead eyes, and I can tell you, that lunatic knows no mercy! Okay, I tried to run through here before, but that didn't work. <laughs> so I just tried walking and, well... <laughs> A militaristic shrimp delivery <laughs> empire? Okay. We just grew long? Old hairpin. Uh, no. It's a oh, hairpin. Yeah, it's a hairpin. I, I guess I thought you were screwed due to the pixelation. <laughs> okay, that's just. <laughs> I was not expecting something that absurd. <sighs> oh, bloody yeah, heck. the lock with this hairpin. Let's see. I'm not sure if that is okay, just stupid enough. Over. Let's see what's in there. Hmm. An old pair of red socks. And a book. Maltese cocktail Bible. Interesting. Unfortunately, the hairpin broke. Why do hairpins always break immediately after picking a lock in a video game? Because we've no use for them afterwards. But I can't I can't tell if a militaristic shrimp delivery <laughs> empire, global empire at that, is too stupid or just stupid enough to fit in with Monkey Island. I think I have a big bigger question here now though. Hmm? Will this be added to a list of why you don't want to eat shrimp? Probably. Let's see. Socks. An old pair of strange red socks. Serious question. Why do we have them in my inventory? And you're not asking that about this? Hmm. Okay, I thought we could maybe use that to make it look like we have claws as well, but apparently no. What's this cocktail bible? If something doesn't work out, give it a shot. Risky on the docks. When you are drunk on Sherbert drinks, you will, uh, your will to take risks will rise, not sink. Unknown Mexican poet. <laughs> Mexican poet. Uh, there's not much to add to this world famous quote. The Risky on the docks is a classic fizzy cocktail and strongly promotes one's own willingness to take risks. While this drink. <clears throat> While this drink enjoys great popularity in the knife throwing community, the chairman of the Caribbean Insurers Association, Peter B. Careful. Peter, be careful. <laughs> Has been calling for a ban on the drink for many years. <laughs> Coffee to no. There was something more if you skipped. Yeah, this, the base, the modifier, and the flavor. Let's see. Uh, Coffee to no, often also called Synopsis Sunrise. You mind gone blank, lost the keys, forget your date's name. Uh, or you just can't figure it out. Vital de detoxification organ with five letters. Uh, this cocktail will give your brain a boost, attention, enjoy at high altitude, side effects, insomnia, clear <laughs> sense of clarity, voices in the heads, uh, mead, rainwater, and coffee. It's alcoholic coffee. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You win it out by alcohol. You never heard of coffee with alcohol in it. Yeah, I know that there are some play. I know there are some things with it, but I don't think mixing alcohol with coffee is going to clear your mind that much. It's just going to addle it right after again. Yeah, wait, actually, um, hold on, hold on. Why the heck is this in a cocktail book? Good points. Also, yeah, I, I know that it. I know it's a decently common thing you can ask for as a dessert uh, at restaurants here, but I forget the name. Wait, you have hmm. your own version of Irish coffee? I, I think that's actually it's Irish coffee. 
Let's see. Michael Hare Jordan. While bad breath of the two on your biceps and a uh, thick black line under your fingernails have long been prerequisites for full-time employment at sea, modern employers more and more want to see stubbly proof of your worthiness too. A sensible beard significantly increases your chances on the job market. The Michael Hare Jordan, Michael Air Jordan, is a popular drink to accelerate the sprouting of success uh, granting facial hair. Whiskey, minimum of 16 years. Modifier, one ripe testose tomato and a dash of coconut milk. Note, the ripeness of a testose uh, tomato can be recognized as with other members of the five o'clock shade family by the stubbly underside, which stands out in, 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 strikingly con in striking contours from the upside down. This red tomato ripens only in a dark and well-watered environment. So like a swamp. Hmm. And near death on the beach. A recipe from the anonymous anesthetist. Not much is known about the effect of this new cocktail yet, but the combination of ingredients alone arouses my interest. What is particularly remarkable about this drink is that it is uh, that is that all of the ingredients must have a black color. Uh, herbal liquor, cold ashes, a personal sacrifice. Okay, <laughs> something is wrong with this drink. I feel very dizzy. <laughs> yeah, I saw that uh, when you were almost finishing the first uh, text uh, higher up, then uh, you looked around and saw that and go, what the heck is going on? <laughs> and why do I get the feeling we need to make that as well? Because we've got ashes here. Oh dear. Well, now mm. we need to find the tomato. Tomato, yeah. tomato. Tomato. Yes. Oh, actually, what's tomato in Dutch? Uh, tomat. T O M A A T. All right, he's all right. Almost same as the Swedish then. Tomat. What Just are you drinking? One more man? A. Just some swamp water. A good water balance is. Hmm. I'm guessing we're going to. Hmm. Actually, let me double check. Uh, if we need whiskey. Hmm. We can't Too make big. that cocktail until we fix the machine, though. Hmm. Are, are we going to need to make some substitutes or something? Uh, wait, hold on. Hmm. Socks? Bronze? Jawbreaker? Thank you. Maybe we could use the socks. The tights would be a more obvious answer, but let's give it a shot. Like the drinks Bible says. But no, we can't interact with them. Can we... You can see the beer. We can't mix these from the looks of it. Hmm. Wait. Can I mix the socks with the hand? I'm not sure if we can interact things with each other. Only with stuff in the world, I think. Uh, hmm. I'm blanking on the if we, we can't drag these or anything. Wait, wait, wait. Are you used to hand on the crab? Uh, it does, it's not an option because it doesn't light up. Hmm. Yeah. I think we get into the point you need to look up. Let's first check around. The sky went, but the. Hmm. Let's check if we can use these socks on anything. And if not, then we'll have to look up a hint. Hmm. Maybe we can use them to pick up something here. Wait a minute, I just mm. realized something. Hmm? Did he give the frog uh, some cocktails? No, I think the, I think the frog just stinks. And more of it, he looks like he has a hangover or something. Hmm. Nothing we can interact with there. Oh, no, no. He looks like he have a, had a very rough night. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, where do we use these socks? 
very obviously missing something somewhere. Because we need an arm for the cocktail maker. Then we can make the swamp monster his uh, beard cocktail. And then we can get the uh, silk for a sail. Yeah, hmm. just what the heck are we missing? I have a feeling when you look up at the guide, you're probably gonna end up getting a bit pissed or something. Or I was just annoyed with myself for missing it. Hmm. Yeah, I th I think that getting the tights is going to be the first thing that sets off that chain reaction of everything else. Hmm. You get beaten up by a crab. Let's see, anything here? It's, the shrimp Hold pie. on! Socks? Hmm? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I saw something! Uh, take, off the, the, take a look! Look at the line! There's a spot for socks there! Yeah. <laughs> okay. The crab seems to be distracted for now. Okay, good thing you spotted it. It thinks the socks are the claws of another crab, okay. <laughs> Is it I spotted that there was a curious gap there. Uh, uh, oh. Let's check this first. This day couldn't get any crazier, could it? I met a legion of shrimps who call themselves the Shrimpire. They are a kind of underwater partial service, and they seem to take their jobs pretty seriously. Fanatically seriously. Okay, we put these here. <laughs> that would make for a real good slingshot. <laughs> I didn't think I've ever owned a slingshot myself. Take this, beaver! <laughs> yeah! Was okay. that a reference to duck hunt? If it was, then we probably <laughs> there probably would have been a dog popping up. <laughs> I think it, it took the rules of dog. Mm, felt better than it should have, I think. We'll take care of the rest! My men are already tearing down the barricade! Here, you can go through! Thanks. Wait! You prove that you are a true ally of the Shrimpire! Here, take this as a token of our eternal gratitude! A soggy stamp. If you ever need to mail something, throw the package into the water with a stamp and address. Valid for two packages. Well tied, immediate delivery guaranteed. One of my men will then take care of it. Shrimpire! Move, move, move! <laughs> okay. And there's our last flower, and... <laughs> Come on! Okay, that's between you and me. Understood? <laughs> you? Tell me, honestly, how are you feeling right now? A bit duped. <laughs> so can we just... Wow, neatly stacked. Hey, what's that? Looks like a wooden leg. Yep. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think we use it for the cocktail machine, aren't we? Yeah. Also, how Wait, hold on. 56. It, 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 look at the pig leg again. Look at the pig leg again. Yeah, there's a bit of bone sticking out. <laughs> and a bit of red. What did the beaver do? Mess <laughs> eat someone who tried to mess with its dam? Uh, it doesn't eat meat. <laughs> well, the, the beavers in Orc definitely tell a different story. No, that's the plants there as well. They're just aggressive and they're tempered with the badams. <laughs> Let's see. Apparently, this wooden leg was a load bearing element of the beaver dam. And stamp of the shrimp hire. A soggy stamp from this strange shrimp uh, troop. Uh, <clears throat> I have no idea what to do with it. We'll probably have to mail something at some point. Okay. For now, though, let's improvise a new uh, arm with a new leg. Nice to see you. How about a drink? <laughs> okay. Let's see this then. Guy went down, but... Nice to see you. How about a drink? 
Okay, oh, we get to right. choose from here. Hmm? A photos for eyes, not... Not slots. Oh, gods. Let's see. Vodka, sherbet powder, 18 years whiskey. Uh, so oh, wait, minimum 16. So 18 yeah. should work. Let's see. Testos, tomato, and coconut milk. I will say that coconut milk is really good with some things. Okay, whiskey. And... I've already forgotten. I believe it was the sherbet power. And... I know it was a tomato. So back. Would you like a drink to get through the day? Okay, whiskey, tomato. Do we have that tomato anywhere here? Uh, uh, is that a bottle of tomato thingy? No. Hmm. Uh, okay. We need to Do find the tomato, don't we? Yeah. Let's see. Coconut milk. Okay. Well, we have the flowers. So, let's go deliver those. We have more than plenty of stupid flowers. <laughs> oh, brother, I've been actually useful in this stream again. Hey! Hey! Do you have the full of flowers? I have more than enough. Great! Give them to me! Not bad, little girl. <laughs> well then, you want to meet Madame Yiko Milele? This way. Tamara! <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> did not expect that. What the heck just happened? <laughs> a secret room under a siren's pond? Uh, well, this can end only badly. Uh, hello. The prophecy is true. You're the one. The one who finally brings light into the darkness. Oh, great. You're mistaking me for someone else. Sorry, old lady. I am not the electrician. <laughs> you don't have to shout at me. I can hear you very well. Fate brought you to this place. And what kind of place is that? This is where I live, and this is where I practice. Not feng shui. Obviously. As I said, I can hear you very well. I'm Cleo. <laughs> can you help me get home? I know exactly who you are, little one. Oh, really? Of course. You want to go home, huh? The encounter with the Kraken scared you to the bone, didn't it? You bet it did. Wait, how did you know? I know a lot about you. Most of it is easy to read, right from the eyes. Wow. And you have not only seen the Kraken with those eyes, have you? You saw a ghost with those eyes too, am I right? You are really good. That ghost, it brought you to me, hmm? I found a severed hand and a logbook in a fish. Hmm. And suddenly this ghost appeared and wrote your name on the wall. Mm-hmm. And then he was gone. Interesting. Give me your hand. Um, okay. Not yours. The severed hand you found. <laughs> oh, uh, of course. No time for palm reading. Just going to chuck it in the fire or in you the... No, looking into the past is easy. But in order to see the future... You have to try a little harder. Ha! I knew it! Do you want to know what I've seen in your future? Have you just turned the dead hand into the soup? Hmm? What is with all these soups today? Do you want to know your fortune or no? Yeah, sure. You're the one. The chosen one. 
The chosen one? Oh great, yes. she's going to pull out a lightsaber. You will finally solve the puzzle and find it. The treasure of eternal memory. What's up with this ghost? Sometimes fate gives you a nudge in the right direction. I understand, but how did he know your name? You're here, right? Ready to begin the great adventure that only you are meant to embark on. Okay, specifically not answering. Did you send it or something? Though how she would foresee just a fish with the hands ending up in the bar when she was right there. Uh, that'd be a bit hard to predict. What kind of treasure is that? It's very hard to find. Many adventurers and pirates before you went on a search. But it was hidden very well. Too well. Fortunately, we know who hid it. For real? Who? Teddy McAnally. McAnally? The inventor of... This ridiculous card game, Kraken Fodder. Exactly. The legend about the treasure of eternal memory started with him. He's been dead a long time, right? Oh, yes. A long time. Me. No, no, that can't be true. I'm not a... What? Not an adventurer. Not a treasure hunter. Not a pirate. You won't be just anyone, sweetheart. As soon as you find the treasure, you will be the most famous adventurer of all time. I saw it, believe me. Actually, I just want to go home. You survived the Kraken. Don't you understand what that means? That I'm destined for something special? It's got lucky Pete smelled like hell. Than a boring life in a bar. I it's your decision. But please let me give you something to take with you. A gift. What is it? Well, take a look at it. Also, I get the feeling a... we're getting worked over a bit for a scam here or something. Yeah, by the way, look at the wall of uh, something that looks squid-like. Yeah. Wait, is that a voodoo doll of the Kraken? It might be. Okay, that adds it even more that this feels like, somewhat like a scam. So how she felt? What? A parrot? A famous pirate with a parrot on the shoulder. And everything, right? That part of your wish has already been fulfilled. It's dead, though, I'm pretty sure. The eyes, my dear. I can read a lot in them. Now it's up to you whether you fulfill the rest of your wish. As I said, it's your decision. Is he... dead? What? Don't be absurd. He's asleep. Oh, good. Oh, God! No. He's sleeping, parrots. He's sleeping in his cage. I, <laughs> I think, I think we're getting, I think we're being scammed. Not, not that most of this isn't real or as such, but I'm getting the feeling that she's putting us up to do the dirty work. Yep, tomato. Thank you. Wow. Wait. wait. Nicely organized. Order is the most important thing. Why does that not look you? I don't know what. No, that's not Japanese. So, what writing is that? Oh, you mean over here? Huh? Just yeah. noticed. Okay. Some I sort of script. Were... Yeah, I thought it was something like uh, kanji or something, but the more I look at it, I realized no, that's not kanji. That's something else. Hmm. That might be of some importance sometime later. So, I'm just going to take a print screen. A bowl half filled with glass eyes. Not scary at all. Okay, at least it's not real eyes. There are these strange mirrors hanging all over the place. 
I had to confess. I, I thought that was supposed to bowl eyeballs laying on top of her tongue. You know everything you need to know, sweetheart. What you make of it is now up to you. From here on, I can no longer help you. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the image it's supposed to provoke, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Hmm. So I'm guessing we're going to see stones with uh, more symbols from Kraken Father. Yeah. For now, we have the tomato. So we can make oh. <laughs> this monster his uh, beard juice. Tough day. Uh, fancy a drink. Hill. Please don't call it that. <laughs> okay, and then it was coconut milk. Okay. Michael Air Jordan. Fantastic choice. Coming right away. Wow! It actually worked! The coconut milk is empty now. I'll take the coconut shell with me. Okay, we'll probably use that at some point. I wonder if we just put in random stuff, if it'll just try to name everything, or if it'll just go, no, that's not a cocktail. Okay. Michael Hair Jordan, my first cocktail from the cocktail uh, cocktail, a thousand. It's supposed to be somewhat uh, to somehow stimulate beard growth or something, but I'm not going to drink that. Okay, we can pour that in there. Oh, oh boy! I, I think the time has come. I knew it. <laughs> hey, you. What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Pretty awesome mustache, huh? <laughs> I know. I have to go, honey. I have some appointments to make. You understand. Let's not make a big deal out of it now. I'm not really into the big goodbyes and stuff. You won't forget me. So, what's a guy gotta do to get a drink around here, huh? Wow. Instant douchebag. <laughs> Also, that voice. That. I feel we have heard, heard that voice before. <laughs> or at least that type of voice, at least. Uh, let's see. Madame Jikome Lele. I met the old woman the siren told me about, and she said uh, very strange things. She said I was the chosen one, destined to find the treasure of eternal memory. She knew many things about me. Maybe she really can tell fortunes? That can be tr uh, can't really be true. Can it? Okay. Now, how do we turn this into a sail? Hey, oh, we just hand it over. It's me again. What the? Do you think this could be used as a sail? What this? A cocoon of a swamp monster with a mustache. Pfft, obviously. Hmm. Great material. Lightweight, windproof. That could actually work. Yes. Looks good. Let me pack my things, and then we start with attempt 38. Watch us instantly sink. Cleo put the parrot cage on board and helped Multi to load the attempt 38. With a jerk, Multi hoisted the new sail, and indeed, they managed to escape from Mira Clay in the old boat. But before Cleo could say anything, a strange and croaking voice commanded. To Macanelli Palms! <laughs> You're alive! <laughs> so it's not dead. <laughs> Chapter 2. Uh -oh. The Will of the Wisp of the Sunken Gallery. Okay, but I think we'll have to, we'll have to call it soon, though. Because we're heading on you know, towards the two-hour mark. Oh, hello, familiar sights. Wait, does it mean that we get to play as different characters? Yeah, you're not the captain. At last, Ignat's will of the wisp. 
Oh, I get it now. Captain Kabaka is a fictional character to describe his adventures. Kebeka? Or may not, maybe not. <laughs> okay, Kabeka is a fraud who, <laughs> who steals the tales of others. <laughs> That's my guess. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. What? Don't you believe me? But... Captain Kebeka is supposed to be a scammer? A sneaky, useless liar and scammer, yes. And by the way, much smaller than you would think. And all these great adventures didn't take place at all? Of course they did! But they were my adventures. The adventures of Captain Avery Alwick. I still can't quite keep up. You were that ghost in my father's bar? And that was your hand in the fish? Aye. But you're a parrot! I'm in this parrot's body! <laughs> Don't you understand? Uh. It was dead. That old woman brought you back to life. Does that surprise you? With all the mold down there, I'm more surprised that not all of the furniture could speak to you. But why? <laughs> well, because I can help you find it. Find it? The treasure? Of eternal memory. I. Nobody has ever been as close as I have been. And you think we could actually find this treasure? Find is not even the right word here, Cleo. I know where the treasure is. We just have to get there. What do you mean? The treasure is on Pambo Island, hidden in the nautical fog. In the nautical fog? Aye! We just need a will-o'-the-wisp to navigate through it. Without a will-o'-the-wisp, we won't find Pambo Island. So we have to go to Micanelli Palms first. To get us a Willow the Wisp, I see. Hmm. So, what now, little girl? Where are we going? Home or to Micanelli Palms? All right, Bertie. Let's find this treasure. Multi, set the sails to Macanelli Palms. Aye. Okay, that explains a thing so, or two. Uh, do you want a cracker? <laughs> Or something. Oh, sh shut up! <laughs> and so the attempt 38 <laughs> sailed with Cleo, oh, a talking parrot, multi the cocktail mixer, and his market leading cocktail mix machine towards Macanelli Palms. Uh, it's an obvious joke, but. <laughs> oh, God! Here we are, Macanelli Palms. And. What now? Somewhere near this island is the sunken gallery of very rare items. The gallery is called Antilantis. There must be a will the wisp there. Find a way to get it for us somehow. Sunken gallery, Antilantis, will o' the wisp. Somehow. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Antilantis? Like, and. <laughs> I think Antilantis is called an island. <laughs> okay, but let's put up a save. Always nice when a game has auto saves and well, multiple slots. <laughs> and yeah, th this game, this game is going to be a joy. Yeah. I like this already, <laughs> and it's made me smile and all that. Do also maybe almost feel horrified. <laughs> Are you sure you want to leave the game and return to the main menu? Unsafe progress will be lost. Uh, better not. Do I look like I care? Leave the game. <laughs> uh, messages like that is a forgotten art. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, no, I will say this. This does... Oh. Yeah, I will say this. Shipwreck, you may have a strong competitor now. <laughs> Yeah, once we're done with uh, Retribution, but I think we'll still be busy with that for the coming months. Uh, seeing as it's, we, we average about three streams per faction with that, so, so uh, six more goes, so three to six weeks. So... <laughs> Actually, wait, but, but, but what I'm <laughs> we could put heart, uh, we could put Shipbreaker on Sunday evening, or put more Retribution, we'll have to see what we feel like. 
Yeah, for I was thinking, we, we did speak of what we were to see tomorrow evening, and we said more Cleo or Shipbreaker. Hence, I said mm. that, yeah, Shipbreaker has a, comp a strong competition now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say it's, it's a 50 50 flip at the moment. <laughs> uh, but for now, uh, yeah. before we end the stream, let's go look for someone to raid. That's the timer going off. Okay. Uh, ta -ta -ta, browser, Twitch, and apparently some people have been poking me on Discord. Not for now, change the window. Uh, ta -ta -ta, Twitch, and let's see. We have a lot of people online. Dr. Misunderstood is still live, but he rated them earlier. Reef the Leaf is playing Breath of Fire 4. Uh, Ichianui uh, is playing Hatsune Miko Project Diva Mega Mix Plus. Uh, they're holding a 12 hour 3 year anniversary stream. Okay, <laughs> good luck with that. Oh, uh, Swalbe is playing Jagged Alliance 2. Lil Tree Live is playing Lethal Company. So is New Gundam Gaming. Torpid Typist is online with Lunacid. I'm Nice is still playing Pokemon. Codenamed Ferret is playing Project Zomboid. Lashris is online with Freedom Planet 2, and he has quite a lot of viewers at the moment, it seems. Grim the Wolf, Lethal Company. Halloween is playing Halo 3. Perch's Daily Scale is playing Born of Bread. And then last two, we have WBPL playing Mech Warrior Online. And Karenai with Tabletop Simulator. VTuber board game nights. Okay. Let me triple check that the browser is muted. It was not, so let's double check that. Um, <laughs> we've seen someone with Lunacid. Yeah, Lunacid is that Nintendo 64 style platform, I believe. Or actually, no, this is something else. Okay, I was wrong then. Um, any you would suggest, or shall I take a pick? I will let you take a pick this time. Let's see. It's been a bit since we visited Torpid. Mm. Yeah, let's go give them a visit. I'm actually. Is this. Lunacid, Lunacid, Lunacid. I think I'm remembering. Is it this a From? Is, is this one of the early FromSofts or something? It looks way too modern for that. Maybe it's uh, inspired by. Movements. Uh, wait, I thought I. S oh, oh, I forgot to hit go live. Yeah, this this looks early uh, from soft inspired, but I don't think it is actually that. Hmm. It, actually, yeah, this looks like an immersive sim part, partially. Hmm. Okay, let let's go let's go say hi. Copy the name and head to our place. Da, 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 da. Okay, slash raid and paste. But before we start that, of course, thank you everyone who is watching now or later. Do we have any lurkers around? Uh, Void Phoenix, uh, thank you for watching. If you are not a bot, if you are a bot, then well, you don't have the capacity to care. And thank you as always for care. Welcome to us, my friend, and thank you all for watching here or on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow we will have the Showcase Sunday where we try out some games to see if they're any good for streaming at another time. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll see what we put in the evening. I, I really would say it is just a 50 50 flip at the moment between a return to Heart Space Shipbreaker after years or continuing with this game. We'll maybe even getting some, in some more. Uh, Dawn of War Retribution, where we start with the Eldar, or would start. You know, for all three, you know, uh, uh, okay, okay, doing all three at the same time would be tricky, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like all three ideas, though. I do know Shipbreaker may end up making me furious. Uh, especially since uh, I, I did play ahead a bit to where we were about, I think, last time we streamed that, years ago. Uh, where, well, we're having to deal with the obnoxious middle manager who is making our live hell. But yeah, we'll see. I, I, I think I'll actually put up a little poll on the server to see if anyone has any interest in any of those. And otherwise, we'll just see which. I might just put it up for a random roll or something. For now, though, uh, let's get that raid started. And yeah, 
Thank you all again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Sleep well, everyone, and watch out for undead seagulls. And uh, backstabbing pirate scammers. And shrimps. <laughs>